Hello, Dan. So right off the hop, uh, Ian and I just want to say a little something. Uh, this is not going to be our typical show. Uh, so, um, it, you know, obviously with everything that's going on in our country right now, uh, we felt like we just wanted the show to kind of be its own thing where we talked about current events and spoke, uh, you know, some of our experiences and what's on our mind. And I know that a lot of times, um, especially in times of crisis and, and really difficult times, people, uh, people return to some media that they like uh, as kind of a, a, an island or a, a relaxation or, uh, or an escape from some of the crap that's going on. And that's awesome. Uh, you should absolutely do that. And that's why we're letting you know right off the top that this is not, that this show isn't really intended to be that. So, you know, we have 243 other episodes you can listen to a whole bunch of YouTube videos, you know, um, some other stuff, you know, there, there's other stuff that, uh, you know, we would suggest you, you look at, um, if it, if this is not the kind of mood that you're in. Right. And so we just want to be sensitive to like where you may be at this current time with everything that's going on and just kind of get in front of that to let you know, like what you're getting into. If you, choose to listen to the show. We're, we're going to be talking about the news and, and politics and all that stuff. So, yeah. And that's Dave's disclaimer. Ian's disclaimer is tough shit. I got stuff to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're exactly right. And yes. So, uh, shit is really messed up right now. Right. It is. And I and I'm sorry, I in particular was just not in the headspace for a zany car show. Right, right. This week. Right. Uh, so this is what we're this is what we're doing this week. Yes. Instead. Yes. And I and we will talk about car stuff later on, I promise. There 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 actually I will bring some of this back to cars because I've been thinking about this all week. Okay. Okay. And full disclosure, we recorded one of these last night. And we completely, I completely lost Ian's audio. No idea what happened with that. You could hear me. I know. Oh, I know what happened with it. <laughs> what happened, Ian? What happened? The cops broke in and took it. <laughs> I was too close to the truth. They broke in and they took it. Yes, that's that's exactly what happened. The, the police, yes, yes, stopped murdering innocent black people for a while and came they in. They shot a pepper ball at their hard drive. <laughs> Yes. Metaphorically. <laughs> exactly. And, and deleted it. Yes. That's, that's what happened. That's, so some of this were kind of retreading from what we did the, the night before, but mm -hmm. we still yeah. felt like we wanted to say stuff, right? Take two. <laughs> <laughs> so, ah, okay. Um, obviously with all of the protests that are going on, uh, that are in response to um, the murder of George Floyd and the systematic and, you know, countless other murders uh, that have happened under at the hands of the police to people of color. Uh, Ian and I are I'm like, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So uh, I'm having a hard time dealing with everything. I know Ian, you've been having a hard time dealing with everything. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, you know, it, what are your thoughts? How are you doing? Yeah. So I, I also sh think we should say off the bat, too, is that we are obviously not here to tell anyone else. Uh, you know, we, we don't want to, like, try to represent anyone else's experience. Right. Right. Because we 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 don't have the direct experience that um, a lot of the people, a lot of um, black people who are in the streets now are talking about. We don't we don't have that lived experience for right, sure. Right. Um, but you know, we do have some observations, I think, and, and, and empathy and empathy and some, and some life experiences that do kind of tie into everything that we're seeing now. So the first thing I do, I do, I do want to talk about is like, I, we talked a little bit when, you know, no one else knows this, but you and I know this, we talked a little bit yesterday about the idea that, that we all have these burdens yes. uh, that we're all moving forward with. And I, and I, I kind of refined my analogy in my head. So 
So go with me on this ride and hopefully it, it makes sense. <laughs> now, I, I really liked how you presented it before. So yeah, yeah. So, so my idea here is that like we're all carrying a blanket and it's not very tight. It's kind of messy, right? Okay. We're, all, we're all carrying a blanket and this is everybody moving forward with this blanket is basically just society, right? Okay. And we have these things that are placed on the blanket, you know, some like historical bad shit that we're, that we never really got off the blanket. Right. You know, totally. Right. Right. And every time we add a new problem, it rolls down into the place where the, the other thing was before. Right. Like right. if you picture a blanket and a bunch of balls, they all kind of roll into the lowest point. Right. Like pressure on pressure on pressure. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think if you think about our, society that way if you think about the past wrongs and how we're all dealing with things like you know the the war on drugs that affects it affects people from all walks of life whether you you near you you know it or not that there are costs to be borne by every single person in the country right. for for bad policy right but they're not distributed evenly because there's these low points in the blanket and those low points tend to be right on top of minorities or poor people or, you know, all these different things. Right. And I think one of the lowest, most high pressure points in this blanket is, um, is above black people. It just is the the people Um, that are carrying the most burden, the most weight from, from, from these societal pressures, these historical pressures that have been with us for so long. Right. Right. So anytime we add another problem, like the militarization of the police or bad housing policy or healthcare crisis that we're currently in. Right. It, all of it rolls down to these lower points. And so we're all, we all are affected, but more people, you know, under that part of the blanket are affected. Right. Right. And I'm going to say also that that extends to cars and car culture. So I've been thinking a lot about this the last day and, you know, everything from just how, um, you know, the, this kind of the sports car boom of post-war America, right? you know, that was available to a very certain segment of society. And, right. you know, we, there's a lot of talk about like how like GIs coming home from the war, you know, were really into, um, you know, the, of European sports cars and stuff like that. Right, right. There were racist housing policies that resulted in the in in the unrest of 1968 and the and the housing bill of 1968 that that basically made it so that was though that luxury was isolated to white GIs that were coming home. Right, right. And so like that all of these things of like how car culture or how car culture intersects with everything else, car culture is under that blanket too. Right. Um, as part of it. Um, and then how, you know, housing policy, the way that the roads are laid out, how traffic flows through a city. It's that's all related. Right. 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 And it all, I'm just it, no, 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 you're not. It, it all builds into the burden that we carry. Right. Like it, mm-hmm. that all makes up the blanket and the weight of the blanket, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, and it and it affects every aspect of life, whether yes. we see it directly or not. It, right, it just does. right, right. So, so now we're in a position as a country where it has taken seven. Well, it it took six consecutive days of protesting across all fifty states. Mm-hmm to uh, to bring the four officers up that were involved in George Floyd's murder to bring them up on charges, right? Yeah, to have all of them face charges. Right, right. So hundreds of thousands of protesters probably? Easily. Yeah, yeah. right? Um, you know, yeah. And then protests across the entire world in solidarity, right? Mm-hmm. Like all of these, you know, protests in the, in, you know, Scandinavia and you know the UK and like all that stuff it's I'm like they're shouldering burdens as well right yeah on top of you know living through a pandemic at this current point in time right a pandemic which just so happens to 
affect uh, affect black people, uh, to affect poor people more, to affect mm-hmm. to impact minority groups to a greater degree, right? Like not everybody, not everybody is treated equal, like or like impacted by the pandemic equally, right? And so that's just another way that the societal pressure, like, mm-hmm. is is just bearing down on on incredibly important people, right? Like yeah. the, the, you know, the lifeblood of our country. Right. Yeah. And yeah. And so the thing that I keep going back to in my mind is that the thing that needs to come out of this is that we just, we cannot find ourselves in a position where it takes hundreds of thousands or millions of people protesting to bring another cop up on a charge when they murder an innocent person. Right. Right. And right. yeah, and I'm just, I'm having a hard time remaining optimistic that there's going to be some really positive action coming from this, but the protests are giving me hope, you right. know? And yeah, I've been thinking about this too. Like what's next after all this. And yeah. the, the, the thing I keep coming back to is we need to develop better mechanisms in this country to um, unfuck situations. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Like we, we, we don't have a good, and we talked about this a little bit last, yesterday, but you know, the, the crime wave between the sixties and the nineties. Yeah. Yeah. That, that kind of roughly happened all around the world. And then it just disappeared and nobody really knows why there's lots of weird theories about it. Uh, interesting theories, like the, the lead poisoning ones, the most interesting to me. But we, we built all these policies around this thing that was happening. We didn't really know why. We still don't know why. Right. But all these policies and mindsets and everything else are still there, right? That's why we have the idea of like tough on crime and everything else. Right, right. So the crime wave ended 25 years ago, but none of the, none of the inertia of that was effect, has ever been arrested. You know, it's never right, been... Right, right slow down or anything so like we, we have to figure out how to unfuck that you know? right um it, it's and, al- it's almost like we need the police force that is appropriate for society at the time right yeah right and it, and and i think another big problem too is that we've made the job of police officer utterly impossible right like it's a it's a nonsense job because it's like a it's a it's a stop gap for every other thing that we're not doing, like, right. you know, we don't provide affordable housing. Right. So, so now they have to manage the house, uh, homeless population. Right. right. We don't provide adequate drug treatment. Right. So now they they're manage arresting, addicts. right. So now they're arresting people who are high and acting crazy. Right. We don't have sensible gun policy. So now, um, Police officers have to be armed to the teeth and wearing bulletproof vests because they don't know when some maniac's going to have a fucking AR-15. You know, yeah, right. I, you know, I, and I feel like my mind goes to EMTs because I feel like they have to manage almost the same quantity of things with mm-hmm. just dress shirts. Right. And yeah, yeah right. Yeah, absolutely. And it's and so like I don't think. You know, I don't think we should have no police officers or no mechanism for enforcing the law. That'd be crazy. But like the police force that we have now is just idiotic. Like right. it doesn't make any sense. Right. 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 It, yeah. You know, like I, you know, being, being the son of a cop, right. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I grew up around cops. I like, you know, I'm very familiar with, you know, a lot of my cop, my, my dad's cop friends. Um, they're kind of like also their kids, like other cops, Uh kids. Right. Um, and I am aware of like the mentality of individuals largely that are attracted to that job, you know? And I think that like one of the things that I'm, thankful for right now is that I I think about this a lot, but that my dad doesn't have to see what's happening right now because 
my dad had a long history of working with homeless communities and like, he's where I get my sensitivity. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know that my dad was a little bit of a pariah in the police force because he wasn't somebody that always went along with like the clicks and the, the crews and stuff like that. And his career, I feel like, you know, I don't know if he ever said this, but I feel like his career probably suffered a little bit from that. Right. right. And so like, I, I think about like when we were, you know, when we were in high school and like, you know, like we're in like after gym class, like, you know, you're in the locker room. Right. And like one guy in the classroom or one guy in the locker room says a shitty thing about like a girl or something like that. Right. And like a couple other guys, you know, also say something, but just about everybody else doesn't say anything. Right. right. And so this like spectrum of bad behavior that needs to be fixed within the police force and within society as a whole. Right. Because as much as like car culture is a microcosm of society, like police culture is absolutely that as well. Right. Um, like that, that entire spectrum of behavior needs to be addressed. Right. Like while the people that are silent may not be the ones that are out there fucking murdering people, Right, they're certainly not making the situation any better, right? Yeah, well, you know? I mean, they're, you know, in this case, they were complicit. Exactly, exactly, right? Yeah, <laughs> and so like that kind of that kind of mentality and that kind of thing needs to be fixed, and that can only be fixed, in my opinion, by punishing complicit complicity. Like, say the word, Ian. I can't say it. I'm not sure that it is a word. Being being complacent, right? Not complacent is not the word. Complicit. Complicit. Thank you. Right. Complicit. Right. So punishing that as well, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of just a single aggressor, right? Right. But Absolutely. assessing an entire situation and everyone that was involved, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, like it's it's easy to you know paint broad strokes and say like fuck the police. Right. Especially with some awful shit that is happening right now. Right. Yeah. And, you know, like I, I don't go with the, you know, it will, it's just a few bad apples spoiling the bunch. Like, fuck that. No, like that is way off. Like it, that analogy is upside down. Like I, I, I honestly feel like the, the, the good cops are truly exclude, like they're an exception. Like it's a minority. Yeah. Right. And, like, and even then, like, I feel like you have to judge individual behavior on an instance by instance basis, right? Because a good cop isn't always a good cop. A bad cop isn't always a bad cop. Like these kinds of things shift and situations need to be analyzed. Well, and, and I feel like too, that the implicit like bar for bad apple yeah. is, is absurdly low by right. you know, like, because the, the, the implication of saying it's a few bad apples is saying that the bar to be a good cop is not having racial animus. Right, right. Or not acting out of racial animus. It, it, yeah, not choking someone to death while being filmed. Right. Right. Like, and that's about it. Right, like, right. So th there needs to be the bar for good cop Right. should be also holding your peers accountable because holding people accountable is the whole fucking job. <laughs> right. 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 Like, exactly. Exactly. It was like, it was like that kind of like phase that like, I feel like a lot of us made like that phase shift when we were younger and maybe like in school where it was like, Oh, it's like, it's the cool thing is to, is to goof around. And then like you realize, Oh no, like, if I don't do something, I'm going to like, I'm not going to have a job. Right. Right. So the cool thing is to actually do good, you know, mm -hmm. to like be good at things and to learn. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. To be a productive member of society. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I feel like there is a lot of self-selection for, you know, 
like it, sadists. Right. right. And, and just people who like want to stay in their hometown and exert yes. power over the people they don't like, essentially. E- either right? like, you know somebody or you know somebody that knows that person, right? Yeah. yeah. Jenny and I were comparing notes and we we among the between the two of us, we know like four or five people who were cops. Okay. And we're going to say a solid 50% of them shouldn't be in charge of themselves, let alone have power over anybody else. (laughs) With especially with a firearm. (laughs) Right. Yeah. And I I feel like if we, if we reduce the size of the police force and made it more concentrated, like we started unfucking it one disaster at a time, like we're going to do these first Three years of oh, homelessness. We're going to do housing, right. housing policy. Right. 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 We're going to we're going to build free housing mm-hmm. and take this. Right. And have and have social workers do nothing but this. Right. And right. We're going to take that directly out of the police budget. And that's going to right. do it like this. Right. 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 Yep. Rob Peter. We, pay Paul. Yes. If we did that over a decade. Uh huh. You know, uh, in a phased way and slowly unfuck things. Right. We would end up with a smaller, leaner police force that we could raise the bar for being a police officer. Right. And, you know, afford to weed out th- these assholes. Right. Who are attracted to, you know, exerting power over others. And busy bodies and sadists will have to do things like be HOA presidents like they <laughs> should be. I was going to say, I have the perfect, I have the perfect fucking job for somebody that's on a fucking power trip, right? I have the perfect vacuum for them to operate in Ian. Do you know what that is? HOA president. Well, no, no, no. GSA agents. It's car related. It's car related. Oh, uh, um, a concourse judge. Nope. They manage the parts desk. Yes. Right. Absolutely. When have you ever yeah. gone to a parts counter and not been met with a heavy sigh and a condescending fucking look? Yeah. Oh, right? you're here. Right. 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 Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I like that. Thanks, like man. That. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Just... <sighs> tap, 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 tap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. No, mm-hmm. it, it, you're you're spot on you're spot on it's fuck man it's 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 really hard to see what we're seeing right now and my heart goes out to the black lives matter movement to everybody that's facing this and yeah i don't know i just want to do everything i can to help yeah you know yeah but yeah but i think that one aspect of it that i really really like they, you know, like there's those people in your life that like, you know what? I don't know a lot about something, but I like whatever, whatever this person thinks they have the experience. And like, I will typically just kind of adopt what they think. Right. Uh-huh. Like my dad, I would always just adopt his view on gun control. Right. Mm-hmm. And he was, he was very anti conceal and carry. Nobody should have assault rifles. Like, you know, like, Hey, like, I I take his view. You are that person for me when it comes to military centric things. Right. Okay. And I want to know about how you feel about the militarization of the police force and like all of like everything that you see around that going on. Yeah. Um, First of all, I'm by no means an expert (laughs) in the air force, which people who are in other branches are going to be like, at least it's not the merchant Marines, Ian. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So I, I was holding it together, you know, angry, but like sort of the level of anger that I just am normally. Right. Um, for a lot of this week. And then there was a picture of a bunch of airmen uh, active duty airmen on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. And I just, I, I, I boiled over. Like I just lost it. It was just like shaking for the rest of the day. Yeah. Um, and it's because I have like this experience um, where I kind of have sort of direct experience with this sort of thing. So, you know, it's been a long time since active duty military have been called out to an American city and everyone's citing 1992 is the last time, but 
there was very nearly another deployment of U.S. active duty troops um, in 2005, which I was a part of. So I was in the military from 2003 to 2007 uh, because I'm an idiot. <laughs> and um, uh, in 2005, we got deployed to Katrina. Um, right. So we didn't, we deployed to the airport. Um, the the Louis, Louis Armstrong International Airport. Yeah, yeah. So we drove there from Oklahoma City. It took from the time we got called in to start packing pallets to the time we rolled into the gate was 60 hours. Um, and I was awake the whole time and drove pretty much the whole way. <laughs> so no sleep, 60 hours. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. But like I was on so much adrenaline because I thought like, oh, we're going to help. Like we're going right. to help people. Right. Because at the time that when, you know, when, when we first got that call, it, the hurricane had just hit and we were, it was still kind of not clear to us, especially since we were kind of head down packing stuff, you know, what a complete, farce it was and how and right. it wasn't clear to us until we got there and got set up how bad it was. Okay. Um, you know, driving in the last couple of miles, the airport was pretty eye opening and like things that I'll never forget, you know, just the destruction. Oh man. And everything else. But so we get there, you know, I was an IT person. So we're, the job was, we're supposed to be able to set up in a field with nothing and 24 hours later have full communications for whoever wants it. Right. That's the, that was our job. Satellite dish, the whole thing. Okay. Okay. So we get there and we roll in the gate and I remember I was, our truck was, um, you know, kind of like a quarter of the way through this massive convoy that we had. So okay. we were kind of near the front and the word reached us pretty quickly that the army Colonel who greeted our commanding officer, a major, uh, told her, um, what are you guys doing here when we showed up? So that was the first sign <laughs> that things were a bit of a cluster. Oh, good. Yeah, that's that's how you would like you coming in like we're going to help. We're going to help. What are you doing here? Right. So then. Um, uh, so we get set up. And it turns out that fiber has already been restored to, um, to the, to the airport. So there's really no need for us from a communications perspective, but our major is like, just go ahead and, you know, build everything out anyway. So it was basically like we were on exercise. Okay. But, you know, Plus in the middle of a disaster. Right. Right. A national disaster. Plus fiber can get cut. <sighs> yeah. But still that's sure. a lot to do. Right. Yeah. Right. And so we're there for a few days and it becomes clear that after a while that we're not going to be allowed to go out and help. Like we're not, we're not there to actually do anything at this point. Like, and you can't fill sandbags. Right. We asked repeatedly, can we do things? Can we pass out water bottles? Can we fill sandbags? Can we do anything? Right. And the answer was no for the entire time we were there. We were there for a month and we didn't go anywhere stayed right on Louis Armstrong International Airport. You were at that airport for a fucking month? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And actually we had to get, we had to evacuate to the terminal at one point because Rita hit. Okay. Yeah. 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 Wow. It was crazy. You were and, just and sleeping in a Hudson news. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and it was just, it was, it was infuriating to me and it, it, it was a moment that changed, you know, my politics and the way I look at the world and everything else. And I think about it all the time because, you know, probably three quarters of the way through that air force one came through and landed and okay. parked in front of our tent. And we were the backdrop for a photo op for, for W. Right. Um, and I mean, that, that infuriated me more than I can possibly express because, you know, I was always, it was always a weird fit for me to be in the military in the first place. Like most of the people I told from back home were very surprised when I, that I did join. And, you know, I, 
I said, I think I've said before uh, on the show, like I did a lot of pushups for, <laughs> for, <laughs> for being belligerent, for being this uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. and um, square peg round hole. Yeah. Yeah. A bit. And, and I just, I think about that. And I saw that, I saw that picture of the, of the people in the Lincoln Memorial. And I know that nobody there signed up to, you know, to, to, to take rights away from their fellow citizens. Right. To scare the shit out of other Americans. Right. We can talk, we can have discussions about the morality of joining the military, you know, which my leftist friends will, will gladly lecture at me all the time about, but that's not what this was. This is, this is another thing, right? This is another thing that's happening. Right. That is just dragging us down into autocratic state. Right. Know? It's it's putting us in a situation where we've said we've other we've invaded other countries based on these kinds of things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Gassing and, their and, own citizens, et cetera. Yeah. And and so I just want to separate for a moment the you know, and, and the other thing too is that you know, my motivations for joining the military were, I found out after I was there, like not all that different from a lot of other people. Like there's a lot of, you, you hear stories about people who were given a choice by a judge. Like you can either, right. Right. You can either be on probation or you can join the military. Like right. th- those stories are not uncommon. And the idea of using the military as an escape, whether it's right or wrong is kind of the point, right. That I'm trying to make. And right. contrasting it with why people join the police. So like if you're not doing it out of a sense of duty, you're probably doing it either to better yourself or escape a situation, right. which was definitely the case for me. And, you know, to be then facing American citizens who are protesting and your back is toward uh, a national monument that belongs to them. Right, right. You know, you're, you're protecting it from them. Right. Who own it is gotta be a huge head fuck for, for those people. And I, yeah. and I think we should spare a quick thought, not too much because, you know, there's lots of other things to be angry and concerned about right now. Sure. Sure. But you know, a quick thought for, for those weird kids maybe who are, real, real pissed about being there. Right. Who are not going to look at things the same way after. Right. Right. There's and a, it's not the same. It's, you know, if you're enlisted in the military and you get told to do that, it's not the same thing as being a cop who can like turn in his badge and gun and do something else. Right. You know, you, you do that and you go to jail. That's, right. You, you have no choice. Right. Um, so it's, yeah, I, I don't know that, that, that and the military, the, the medic helicopter. Oh yeah. Trying to blow people out. Like that shit just, it sent me over the edge and like, I I have not been able to string sentences together at the same since. Right. And I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Yeah. 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 It's fucking horrible, man. It's awful. It is. It is. And I just, I don't understand how we can, you know, the, I feel like the, the slide from the top towards fascism is just happening so, so fast. These right. Last couple of weeks. Right. Yeah. We, yeah. I was joking with my therapist because what else am I going to do? Uh, sure. That, um, that like, like not only have all of these like things, like these massive shifts, have happened. Right. Mm -hmm. But there's all these little ways that shit has just changed forever. Like if you think about something happening slowly, you might say like, Oh, you know, uh, uh, human resources, uh, procedures are glacial at best. We can't even say the word glacial anymore because that basically means like it's melted and gone. It's not slow anymore. Like, like Mm -hmm. all of these little things that like just creep up that are such like elements of like just our daily speech are just fucked. When, when, when have you bristled when you've been on like a conference call or something like that? And somebody on the call has said, uh, 
you know, just because this is just how we used to speak. Like, oh, uh, you can uh, you can apply that policy, but if you apply this thing, then uh, such and such is going to trump it. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. 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 It's 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 weird because I say that phrase and like it feels weird coming out of my mouth. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> but like, there's no other phrase. For override. It, so. Override. <laughs> override. I like that. Override. <laughs> yeah. Come to me, synonym boy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, Missouri. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I don't know. The list of things we have to unfuck is just real long. Yeah. Yeah. I I I do like your I I really do like look your your idea around looking at what has been thrust on to police officers and EMTs and folks like that to manage that they should not be managing, right? And remove yeah. removing that stuff. Yeah. Creating creating uh, all of those spaces to operate. Right. Right. I mean, I don't know. I mean, the, the, the police accountability to police officers does need to change. Absolutely. And it needs but to be civilian led in my opinion. It does. It does. Yeah. I would love to see civilian review boards be, have firing power over police unions. Yep. Yep. You know? Yep. Um, I think that would be a great reform, but it's, we can't, we can't, I don't think that is going to be enough alone because we have to change the job and to change the job, we have to change the world around it and like how right. we attack problems. Right. And I just, we suck at like summoning the will to do kind of unsexy things like housing policy, you know? Right. Whereas, you know, look, I got my constituent city a uh a fucking tank right the police department right that's a photo op baby you know right. like <laughs> right right yeah yeah right which is a lot sexier than here's a shitty apartment we're gonna give someone for free right 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 so i don't know i'm i'm not crazy optimistic but yeah yeah it's it's been harder to be optimistic lately for sure yeah i can tell you i'm real fucking glad everybody on the planet now is walking around with a goddamn supercomputer in their hands right right yeah i mean and that is the one good thing about this is that like at the end of the day accountability will happen right um whether people in power want it to or not right Right. Um, so, so that is, that is a good thing. Right. Um, but it's been way too long coming. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So. <sighs> yeah. I know, buddy. I know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Do you have anything else you want to say about this? You know, the, it, I think, you know, I said it last night, but like until like until we're in a situation where if we were given the option of switching places with it, or just a member of society was given the option of switching places with a black person in, mm -hmm. in their life and they would say and they would say yes without any kind of hesitation whatsoever then we're not in an equal society. Right. And I hope that someday we can get there. I'm, I'm going yeah. to continue hoping that we could get there because that's where I want us to be. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't know that that's ever going to happen, but, um, but that doesn't mean we that, won't try, right. We won't right, want right. the it. trying is the important part. Right. 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 Yeah. yeah. <laughs> fucking That's, tired man i know, you know i know right it's exhausting yeah figuratively literally emotionally yeah yes absolutely so but, so how do you tie this all to cars ian well i was trying to <laughs> with how car culture has right. been affected by all this and shaped by it like the 
you know, the guy with a two car garage who has a sports car and basically like defined a generation of American car culture. Right. Exists partly because of racist housing policy and white flight and just the way that post-war America was. Right. right. And, and to think that car culture and both could both like commuter culture and enthusiast culture right. aren't shaped by that is ridiculous. Right. I mean, we all make fun of the stereotypical white guy in a Hawaiian shirt with a Corvette. Right. Right. That the reason that stereotype exists is because of those things. Those were right. the people who had a two car garage, you know, the ghetto, which was an, an intentional creation of the government didn't have two car garages. Right. Right. You know, people didn't have nice roads to, uh, to enjoy their cars on. Right. Those things weren't accessible to people. Right. So the idea that car culture hasn't been affected by racism or we don't have that, we're not also carrying that burden for it. on right. that Lopsided of that blanket. Right. It's ridiculous. Right. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. We've, and that's one thing that we've always wanted to do with the show is to correlate our little microcosm of culture in with culture as a whole. So we can look right. at, you know, shit like people just being racist when it comes to say hating donks. Right. Right. right? Exactly. When, yes. when like somebody might be like, Oh, that's actually not that safe. Right. Okay. That's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but if, if they're like, Oh, I hate that. You know, like they have some kind of visceral reaction that you can tell riles them up in a way that is speaking to something greater at their core. Right. Right. Uh, you know, something bigger than just a car. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, like, why is that really upsetting you? Right. Yeah. And exactly. why don't you have a problem with the general Lee? <laughs> <laughs> right. right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. It's all interwoven. And, yeah. and it, I mean, obviously in car, in car culture too, there's more like explicit uh, instances of racism too. I mean, just think about motorsport, like, you know, NASCAR. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and their struggles to attract minority drivers. Yeah. Um, Lewis Hamilton yeah. uh, came out in support of Black Lives Matter and called out all the other drivers for not saying anything. Right. You know, some of the and some of the responses were were pretty good, like uh, of just being like, you know, I didn't know that I could say something, that right. sort of thing, like because right. I'm European and white. Right. Um, like I'm from Monaco and crazy. Rich. <laughs> right. Right. Um, uh, but then like there was one that I wanted to talk about, too, and I you reminded me um will buxton who's a commentator yeah uh kind of like got all pissy and was like you know well i've said something and the only thing the thing that i can think of to describe of like why that's a terrible thing to do is like if you go if you went to like a a, a takeout restaurant you know where you order on one side of the counter and you pick up from the other and they shout the <laughs> order numbers over the microphone and Order 341. And then you just ran up and grabbed the mic and were like, that's not my food. That's not my food. <laughs> For every other order. That's basically what you're doing. Right. You know, if 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 he's not talking about you, he's not talking about you. <laughs> and you can say nothing. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So when people are getting called out for not saying anything, you don't have to say, I did say something. Yeah. You don't have to say not all men. Right. If if the person talking about you isn't talking about you. Right. They're not talking about you. <laughs> you know, I, I heard like a, a lot of people are struggling like with what to say. Right. It's, I mean, that's the whole reason we're doing the show tonight is just to get some stuff off our chest. Right. Mm -hmm. And I heard somebody on a, uh, it was on the Doughboys podcast, right? It's a podcast about uh, chain restaurants and fast food and stuff. And it's, okay. it, it's a good podcast. Um, but uh, one of them said like, I would rather look stupid trying to do the right thing than to not even try to do the right thing at all. 
right? Because if I try to do the right thing and it turns out that like I didn't do it right or I was stupid, like I know that like my intent was still there and I'm going to be receptive to feedback and I'm going to learn from that and figure out how to do better, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm okay looking stupid trying to do the right thing, right? Instead of not doing anything, right? Yeah. I don't always have that impulse and it's not healthy. I should have that. Okay. Uh, I should have that mindset more than I do. It's um, e- it's easy to get paralyzed sometimes. Right. right you know, right. Yeah. it is. It is. Yeah. I, I felt paralyzed for a good few days after seeing George Floyd's murder, man. Like, yeah. what the fuck? Like, yeah. You know? Like, yeah. 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 And that's why, I, that's part of the other reason I wanted to do this, right? Is because, you know, I didn't want to... I don't, I in particular don't like the hashtag thing. Like I right. just don't, I'm not, not a, not a joiner right. particularly. Right. And I don't, I, I feel, I feel like we are doing it. I'm like, right. I don't, never, never kind of got, gotten on those bandwagons. Um, but I feel like talking through this stuff with, you know, with a friend is better and, for some odd reason, people listen to this. <laughs> I mean, not this show, but um, yeah. Well, I'm very thankful for your perspective. So know that, know that like I truly am. I'm thankful to well, have you I'm, have a friend. I'm, I'm thankful for your perspective too, especially as the son of a career police officer, because you know, I, my default position is skepticism of people with power as it should um, be, as it should right. be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because it's like, well, why, why did you want that? It's <laughs> <That's my, laughs> right. always my first thought. Right. Right. Why, why are you here? Right. Um, I, I can. And so it's, it's helpful to get a, a, a verification that I'm not crazy. And this shit is yeah out of control. And the people in power seem to be reacting poorly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can tell you, you know, um, I don't know if I've ever said this before. I know I haven't said it on the show. I don't know if you know this or not, but but, um, like just speaking from my dad's experience as to what brought him into the police force, right? Mm -hmm. Um, He was raised super fundamentalist Christian Mm -hmm. and... um, there's not a better way to say this, but like his dad beat the utter living shit out of him. And, um, he was told that he, the only way he could be a good person was to be uh, a pastor and to stay in the church and things like that. Right. And, um, besides the constant physical and emotional abuse that he endured as a kid, when he was an adult and moved away when he finally could, uh, at 17 years old, um, uh, he still endured tons of abuse from his, his parents. Right. And so did my mom when they got married. And, uh, so my dad had to try to find something that, allowed him to feel like he was making a positive change in society when he came out of this, like growing up being told that, that he was nothing and that he was doing wrong, 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 wrong. Right. Right. And so I like, that was the thing that my dad never came out and said that because we didn't really talk about that much. Um, My mom knows a lot more about it and, you know, and she's told me some things. My dad has told me some things, you know, and, you know, yeah, I, uh, yeah, fuck my grandpa, man. Um, but, uh, like, you know, that was, that was what he was trying to do to find his identity, you know, to try to find, to try to find a way to be a good person. Right. right. And so, you know, that was, that was reflective of his personality. Right. And it was you know, you could tell that like he, he, he was there to help people 
And like his cop buddies after he passed away, I heard about all these stories about my dad, like, you know, doing crazy stuff, you know, just like handcuffing himself to somebody that was about to jump off the building. And like, you know, like all of these stories, you know, that like, you know, that my dad would never tell me because he was way too humble, you know, <laughs> or if like he, uh, you know, found somebody that was trying to hang themselves in, in a jail cell, like he just had his pocket knife and cut them down. And then, uh, they survived of course. And I was like, Oh, you know, what'd you do at work today? He's like, yeah, somebody tried to hang themselves and cut them down with a pocket knife. It was just like, right. Like it's like, Oh, I have two dimes in my pocket, like that casual. Right. You know? Yeah. So like, that's the, like, I know that, I know that there's similar people out there. Right. And I know that like in all of these walks of life that people are drawn, like people go to the military police force, like something like that as an escape, as to try to find their identity, as they've got some kind of fucking chip on their shoulder that they're trying to prove. They just want to beat up people that they think are less than them. Like we're dealing with all of that. Right. And, and it's got to change. Like it's, it's just got to change. We need it to change. And I'm really hoping that it doesn't consistently continue to take the quantity of protests or any protests at all to right. convict cops that fucking murder people. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. I mean, yeah. and I don't, and I think I'll go further than that. Like we should be working to make sure that it doesn't make sense for these jobs in society to be landing pads for people with those chips on their shoulders. Right. Right. right? Like right. we should be working to, I mean, retrain people to not be dickheads. Right. That's right. Otherwise, like what are we doing right. other than keeping ourselves from being eaten by wolves? Like the whole point of society is that. If right. Nothing else, right? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So the idea that we're comfortable with, you know, someone like your dad being an outlier yeah. in policing is insane. Right. 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 And it, it, that should be insane. You know, like if, if, if your stories were, I had, you know, I had eight elementary school teacher, you know, elementary and, and middle school teachers. Right. And six of them beat the shit out of me every day. <laughs> so those other two were awesome. You'd be like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> right. 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 The whole yeah. system needs to change. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I think we did good work here today. You know, I'm, I'm really thankful to talk to you, Ian. I really you am. You too, Dave. Yeah. You too. So, I would be more thankful if everybody who made it this far donated some money right. to uh, uh, their local uh, bail funds. Yes. Yeah. Directly to Black Lives Matter. Um, those organizations um, need your support right now. Yep. Um, and... Uh, We'll post, we'll post links to, uh, we'll post a link to the Colorado bail fund yep. in the description. Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. But yeah, that's, that's, uh, everybody who made it this far is call to action. <laughs> yep. Yep. Tag a, tag a call to action in there. 54 minutes in. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. That's Nailed right. It. Yep. Yep. Stuck the landing. Mm -hmm. Also keep listening to run the jewels for. Oof. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, ha I have a, a, maybe like a 45 minute drive ahead of me tomorrow in the old man sedan. And, yes. and I, that is what is going to be playing. Yeah. Hell yeah. 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 I've been, I've been blasting it when I haven't been on dumb phone calls with my dumb customers. I've been, <laughs> um, I've been listening to run the jewels on, on a loop. So. Yeah. Good. Good. Right. It's been helpful. Been helpful. Yeah. Take care of yourself, everybody, right? And your neighbors. Yeah, and yeah. your neighbors, right? Yeah. Allow yourself to have some escape. Stay vigilant. Stay strong. Yeah. Right? Keep your head in the game. 
right? We keep, love you. Keep your fucking camera phones rolling, man. For real. Right? For real. Yeah. We do love you. We do. Right? All right. Goodbye.